Hey, welcome back. Based on a brand new report from the S&P CoreLogic Case Shiller US Home Price Index, um, we have all time record highs for home prices. This was just announced on Tuesday, May 28th for the month of March. Um, here is the chart looking at their index um, over uh, the past one year. This is not seasonally adjusted. The previous all time record high uh, was set back in October last year when the index was at um, 312.79. Um, it has been increasing this year and this March reaching a new high at 316.65, all time record highs for home prices. Now here's a report from CoreLogic. Uh, this covers uh, March, but it's really an average of the previous two months. So March's numbers is really a three month average of January, February and March closing prices. Therefore, this is based on offers being accepted from home sellers as early as November of 2023. Therefore, this is one of the reasons why I have not been making videos based on this uh, report because it's extremely lagging. This is based on home prices as early as November last year, and here we are in late May. However, I do wanna go over uh, this report with you guys because in my personal opinion, this is probably one of the best ways to gauge home price trends on a national level because this is based on the repeat sales method. So in other words, you look at houses that sold and look at the previous sale for that exact same house and um, figure out what is the overall trend in home prices compared to the previous month and also from one year ago. In stark contrast, we're talking about average home prices, probably the worst metric uh, in order to gauge um, home price trends. Um, there's that, but also we have the median sold price. The median sold price, um, I'm actually kind of um, falling out of love uh, regarding that metric because even though it's based on the middle number, so if the median sold price is $500,000, this means half the sales sold for more than that and half sold for less than that but I've been talking about the channel for quite some time. We're seeing a huge increase in houses selling for over 750 and over $1 million and a huge decrease in the more affordable range. So because of the mix in sales, that is, in my personal opinion, impacting the overall national median sold price. Not the only trend, not the only reason, uh, but um, it is impacting it in my personal opinion. So when looking at the repeat, repeat sales method uh, from CoreLogic, I believe Zillow does this as well, and also the um, Federal Housing Finance Agency, they all have uh, the repeat sales method. Again, arguably the most um, updated, or not most updated, the most accurate depiction of home price trends on a national level. So please make a comment below your thoughts regarding that. Anyways, um, I found this to be a really interesting report because they actually break this down by um, 20 of the biggest cities and how they fare compared to last month and one year ago. And um, some other trends as well, um, how the gains were seen this year compared to pre-pandemic levels. So in any case, it says monthly appreciation in March, again, a measure of the average change in prices from January, February, and March. And it's extremely laggy, making it um, it's challenging to report this to you guys because it's based on basically a six month lag um, at, at best here. Anyways, monthly appreciation in March continued to heat up beyond the typical seasonal uptick, pushing prices up by 1.3% compared to the previous month. While home prices appear to remain impervious to high mortgage rates, the overall housing market appears to be stuck in second gear. In other words, it's not flying off the shelves like we saw in 2022. It's moving forward, but moving forward at a, a slow clip. Home sales so far this year are only slightly above last year's levels in most markets, despite some increase of inventory levels. So if inventory was skyrocketing and we saw a huge increase in home buying demand, of course, home sales will also skyrocket as well, right? Now here's a look at inventory levels, no, sorry, not that, <laughs> this. Um, inventory levels according to our good Uncle Fred. The source here is the National Association Realtors, or NAR. So here's inventory levels uh, for April. Uh, just posted a few days ago. I made a separate video regarding that, um, so um, check that out if you, didn't, if you didn't see it. Anyways, for April, there's approximately 1.2 million houses for sale. However, this includes 
much of the pending home sale. So the uh, inventory numbers, of, according to NER, includes houses actually for sale, but also pending home sales as well. That's why this figure at 1.2 million, it's much higher compared to Altos Research and also Realtor.com as well. In any case, you can see here clearly that inventory, by the way, this is not seasonally adjusted, but inventory has been increasing every single month this year. Uh, right now we're at 1.2 million. Last year at this time, just over 1 million. So therefore, even though inventory has been rising, take a look at existing home sales. Home sales have been decreasing for the past two consecutive months. So in other words, we're seeing increase in supply, but decreasing demand, which is causing inventory to rise even further. And that's why CoreLogic believes we're stuck in second gear. Going back to uh, the report, in markets with the most supply improvements of inventory, in other words, the biggest increases of inventory levels, such as Florida, Texas, and South the Southeast in general, demand has cooled um, some from last year's frenzy, and home price growth is rapidly decelerating. According to the uh, latest CoreLogic HPI data, the top five coolest markets are New Orleans, Austin, Texas, San Antonio, and also Cape Coral, Florida, and Northport, Florida as well. All markets with either significant supply gains or concerns over rising costs, such as insurance, maintenance, and property taxes, for example. In addition, due to the concerns of rising insurance costs and the availability of coverage, so for example, in California, a lot of insurance carriers are dropping coverage altogether or they're not offering any new policies, such as State Farm. Given the frequency of disastrous weather events, these areas could see home price decreases going forward as additional homeownership expenses get capitalized into home prices. So in other words, what they're saying here, we're not just talking about home prices, we're talking about the overall picture because your housing payment is your principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And on top of that, if you have a note HOA, um, then you have um, HOA payments and in some areas, special assessments due to uh, the ongoing maintenance requirements uh, or reserves that are now in Florida. The Florida, Florida condo market, um, absolute disaster um, to say the least. Uh, and I made a video about that as well a couple of days ago. Anyways, by contrast, markets with the strongest home price gains, particularly those in the Northeast and the West, continue to struggle with housing affordability challenges and sales, but have strong demand, which is driving appreciation in those markets and the national index. So for example, on a national level, their index increased by 6.5% this March compared to March of 2023. Uh, the biggest gains at these 20 markets are actually in Boston, Massachusetts, Chicago, Cleveland, Los Angeles, Miami, New York, and also the biggest gain, San Diego, California. What's um, absolutely eye-opening about that market, the median sole price is just under $1 million, but prices surged by over 10%, so a big increase compared to one year ago. Um, after that, we have, um, in stark contrast, the smallest gains year-over-year year is actually in Denver, Colorado, up by only 2.1%. That was followed very closely by Portland, Oregon, up by 2.2%. So even though the uh, changes are vastly different for these markets, every single one of these 20 biggest cities is up from 12 months ago. Going back to CoreLogic report, in March, the US CoreLogic uh, index flattened out at a gain of 6.5% year over year, the ninth straight month of annual appreciation. Home prices are now up by 2.7% compared to the June 2022 peak. So we have all-time record highs for home prices based on this report. But what's quite remarkable is this right here. The non-seasonally adjusted month-over-month -month change, this is the month change from February to March this year, continues to show a strong seasonal increase up by 1.3%. That is notably higher than the 0.8% increase recorded between the average between 2015 and 2019 in March. Last spring, where home prices heated up very much so in the spring home buying season, they also increased by 1.3%. They also provide this chart looking at the home price changes compared to the previous month. So the red line is this year, of course. Uh, in 2022, that's in black. 
Uh, this line above is 2021, and the gray bar below here is the average in 2015 through 2019. As you guys can see here, the gain from the previous month in, in February was a gain of 1.3%. That actually is more or less on par. It actually is equal to the gains we saw in 2023, but below 2021 at 2%, and also below 2022 at approximately 27 But all these numbers, or all these figures here, are still well above the average in um, pre-COVID levels when the average was a gain of around 0.8%. So we'll have to see what the rest of the year looks like because, I mean, look what happened in 2022 when inventory and rates more than doubled in less than six months. They went from a, a gain of around 2.8% back in March down to, what, down by about 1.2% in August, a huge decrease in home prices in a very short period of time. In regards to how these um, prices compared to the peak back in 2006, uh, they provided this uh, here. Compared to the uh, peak of 2006, the 10 city composite index is now 51% higher, while the 20 city uh, composite index is up by 57%. However, though, adjusted for inflation, which is showing some signs of easing, barely, um, we'll have to see that about that. On Friday, we have the PCE report that'll be announced, which will be very telling to see at least. In any case, adjusted for inflation, the 10 city index is now 3% higher from 2006, and the 20 city index is up by 7%. On a national level, home prices are 16% higher, adjusted for inflation, compared to 2006. CoreLogic also provided this as well because there's some markets that are experiencing big gains compared to pre-COVID levels this March. And by the way, I believe this is a typo. I believe this is the average March 2015 through 2019, the average March for each of those years compared to this March. In any case, um, in Seattle, this March, they saw a gain of 2.7% compared to the previous month. Compare that to the pre-pandemic average, up by 2.3%. Uh, the big differences are this right here. Cleveland, Ohio, up by 2.4% um, from February to March this year, compared to the average, a small increase of 0.3%. Uh, we're also seeing big differences in San Diego, Boston, uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York, increasing by 1.5%. The historical average, a small gain of 0.3%. In contrast, areas like Phoenix, Arizona uh, saw a gain of 0.5%, lower than historical average at 0.6% gain. Also, Tampa, Florida up by 0.5%, lower than historical norms up by 0.7%. So please leave me a comment below with your, your thoughts regarding today's video. Um, I appreciate you guys watching today's video. Of course, if you guys got any value, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Of course, I appreciate you. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.